and welcome to today's BBC Schools News Report from Colm Prem Academy. My name's Jess. And my name's Lewis. Today's stories. The impact of Hoax 999 calls. Burnley Stars tip for England's success. Science Week goes out with a bang. Over to Estelle and Harmony with our first story, Hoax 99 calls. Recently in the news, there have been stories about a number of net Hoax 999 calls and young people have been found to be responsible. Unfortunately, this is a crime that is all too common in the UK. These pranks have been known to be named as reckless, stupid and idiotic by the police as someone could have been, could have lost their lives whilst all, hand, all call handlers were distracted during this time. It is a criminal offence under the Malicious Communications Act and it is also classed as wasting police time. What, what makes this so frustrating is bringing the perpetrators to justice which, may, which is made difficult by the fact most of the calls are made using pay to go. We will now hand over to Sophie Spencer and Natalie Parry interviewing Miss Marsden. We are joined now by Miss Marsden, a psychology teacher at Compromet Academy, who has offered to give her an opinion on Hawks Club. What, what do you think would motivate a person to make a Hawks call? There could be a couple of different reasons why young people make a hoax call. One reason could be that they simply don't realise the implications of the impact of their actions. For example, they could actually affect somebody's chance of survival if that um, emergency service is, is required for an emergency. Another reason could be that the students or the young people are with a group of friends and that's actually encouraging them because they see it as something that's actually increasing their status within the group and, and increasing their self-confidence when in fact normally they wouldn't carry out such an accident. Why do you think they did so many? One of the reasons the students may have made so many hoax calls is that because they were with a group of friends it could have encouraged them and stop them from actually thinking what am I actually doing and how serious the situation is. Also it may have actually made them feel so good and they got caught up in the excitement of the moment that they lost that sense of responsibility. Do you think it is common for young people to make this many hoax calls? I don't think it's common for young people to make hoax calls. It's not something that you hear about every day in the news. And for it to be publicised on the front page newspaper shows how serious it is. So most young people do realise that they need to use their phone sensibly and do so. Many thanks for your input. With Mr Burroughs, an ex-police officer, who's going to give his expert opinion on hoax calls. How common are hoax calls? Unfortunately, uh, hoax calls are a common problem these days. Initially, they came from call boxes but now everybody seems to have a mobile phone and it is a major problem. Did you have any experience of investigating hoax calls whilst in the police force? Yes, in my time I did attend uh, many hoax calls along with the uh, fire brigade and the ambulance service. Uh, what people don't tend to realise is that every emergency call is treated as such and as such it puts lives at risk with an emergency tender speeding to the scene. What methods do the police do to catch those responsible? Uh, the police do have uh, sophisticated uh, equipment these days for tracking calls. So uh, just because it's from a mobile doesn't mean they escape detection. Thank you Mr Burroughs for your time. We are now joined by Mrs Blumley, our head teacher, to talk about her views on this subject. As a head teacher, what message would you give to the young people in your care about 999 hoax calls? I would want all students to realise how important and serious this matter is. The emergency services are there for everybody. We don't know when we're going to need them. By wasting their time, we're not supporting them and helping them to do their job effectively. This is why it's recognised as a criminal offence. It's against the law and it's important that we all share some responsibility. Thank you for your time. This week has been National Science Week in our school. There have been many exciting events going on. During Science Week there have been many activities in our school such as tasks with information to fill in questionnaire to win a prize. One of our science teachers done a dissection and, and many other science experiments have been going on. National Science Week is a 10 day celebration of maths, science, engineering and technology featuring fascinating, entertaining and engaging events and activities across the UK for people of all ages. Ready, sir? Yep. Kill yours. Oh! 
In other news, there is a there is a solar eclipse happening tomorrow on the 20th of March, starting around 7:40, and the main point being about 9:30 and ending at 11:50. It is a total solar eclipse. We spoke earlier to Mr. Dearden. Next, we're going to speak to Mr. Dearden at Comprom Academy. Obviously, it's Science Week all across the country, but the big event this week is the solar eclipse. Could you tell us a bit more about it, Mr. Dearden? That's a good question now, Lewis. What actually happens is this, the moon will directly get in the path between the sun and the earth. That happens very rarely. Last time it happened was 1999, so it's a big event in the science world. The reason it, it happens is because the sun is about 400 times bigger than the moon, but it's 400 times further away. So when the moon gets in the right place, it'll almost block out the entire sun. So 98% of the sun will be blocked out. Unfortunately, where we live, it'll depend on the weather, and it's very likely that cloud cover will destroy our view. However, if we are lucky enough to see it, we must be really careful that we don't directly look at the sun. So most people will be looking at it through TV, through television. That's the safest way, and that's probably how we'll observe it, unfortunately. If we're in the Outer Hebrides, we'll get a great view. So that, in a nutshell, is what is going to happen. There are lots of myths about this. The one myth that's gone throughout the centuries is that this is the end of the Earth, and it isn't. Today we are waiting in anticipation to see if three of Burnley's star players will break into the England squad. The three players are Kieran Trippier, 24, from Bury, Tom Heaton, 28, from Chester, and Danny Ings, 22, from Hythe, all of whom have played for England at under-21 level. Local lad and goalkeeper Tom Heaton has so far kept six clean sheets in 29 appearances for the Clarets. Roy Hodgson has a, cho a tough choice of who to choose. So what does this mean for the town? Well, this means that there will be an even bigger buzz around Burnley and both the fans and players will be eagerly anticipating the squad announcement at 12.30. It will be put, on, it'll be put Burnley on the footballing map which will also improve the popularity of UCFB. UCFB is a university of football business situated at two different locations one at Turf Moor and one at overlooking Wembley Stadium. UCFB provides university degrees and executive education in the football business and sports industries. Burnley is really a town of football excellence. We are going to hand over to lifelong Burnley fans, Mr Bennett and Brandon Taylor, who, are, who will give their opinions on today's possible England squad. Do you think Danny Ings put a good performance in against Manchester City on Saturday to bring in the England squad? Um, I don't think he's been uh, too good like against Southampton, but he's been consistent all season against super big teams. And I still think he should be called up to England squad because he's been really consistent all season. Do you think that since Burnley have kept a clean sheet against Manchester City, Southampton and Manchester United, both Heaton and Trippier have shown well how, how well they can play defensively against the big teams? I've got to say, to be honest, that Trippier and Heaton have been two of the most well, the best players in the Burnley team, and they've been instrumental in the success of the team itself. So I do believe we are play playing it amazingly well in comparison to some of the bigger teams at this point in time. We just need that more, much more consistency against the lesser teams. But I'm sure those two players are going to be great for the future of our club.